I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Everyone on this earth has needs. It doesn't matter whether you want to have needs or not, you have them. A need is something that is required in order to live, succeed, or be happy. And here's the thing about needs. You can't unneed them. You can't decide that something you need is not required. You can't talk yourself out of it. So your one option when it comes to having a need is to meet it. But this is easier said than done. Why is it easier said than done? Because we so often have aspects of us that are standing in the way of having the need met. This is not natural. You are born understanding that your needs will be met and that it will be easy. A baby is not born panicking that it will not get milk or worrying about having its diaper changed. To the baby, being cuddled is not an impossible dream. We learn through our trauma in our life experience that our needs will not be met, and worse than that, that our needs are not okay. A common pattern that we have is we go to the places where our needs can't be met in order to get our needs met. It's a little bit like going to an auto repair shop when you want to shop for food. Or it's the person who wants desperately to have a loving, connected partnership and yet directly opts for partners who are unavailable, who are avoidant in nature. The primary need in all beings is the need for love. But what's standing in the way of us being able to get this need met? Oftentimes it's thoughts like, love is not actually ever going to come to me. It's thoughts like, love is dangerous. If in our life experience, we experience love in the context of ulterior motives, we develop a belief that's embedded in our bodies that says that love cannot ever happen without a catch. Because of these types of barriers to love, we do not allow in the very thing we need and want so desperately. From this state, so often we are the person who is starving for food in a grocery store, convinced there's nothing to eat. The people in our life can see that they're giving us the very thing we need and want, but we can't take it in. We have to become aware of what we need. To do this, we have to be able to recognize the feeling of dissatisfaction, craving, wanting, emptiness, desperation. For this very reason, if you're having a difficult time feeling, you obviously won't be able to feel when you feel those feelings. So the first step is to watch my video on YouTube titled, How to Feel. Once you watch that video and you start practicing how to feel and you start to notice those sensations of craving, of wanting, of emptiness, of lack, you look to the opposite side of that for what it is that you're lacking, what it is that you're craving, what it is that you're wanting. Some of our needs are quite simple to meet. For most of us in the Western world, we don't fly into a frenzy when we feel hunger. Why? Because we know it's just as simple as going to the grocery store or going to our own fridge. However, if you are raised in a third world country where it was difficult to find food, you can bet that when you feel that feeling of craving for food, it comes with a lot of resistance. Resistance because you don't believe that that need will actually be met. Now this is in the Western world, much different when it comes to emotional needs. We live in a day and age where most of our emotional needs simply are not met. And so when we feel an emotional need, we have the same reaction as somebody who would be starving for food. We are completely convinced that there's no way to get that need met. So we start to panic. We start to go into lack. We start to feel as if there is no way that we're going to be able to satisfy those negative feelings within us. We're not going to be able to go in the direction of what we need. We don't even know how. I want you to understand that trauma at its fundamental level is the experience of lacking something that we need and want, particularly when it applies to emotional needs. So once you have identified what your unmet need is, that need that you feel is difficult to fulfill, I want you to ask yourself the following question. 
What would I have to give up in order to have fill in the blank with what you need? For example, for me to be able to feel love when I'm sitting in the room with someone, I would have to give up my belief that love is dangerous. I would have to give up my constant thinking because my mind brings me out of the body so I can't feel connection to people as real people in the room. I would have to give up the story that I always lose what I love. I would have to give up sending text messages to that person who never sends any back. Keep in mind that anywhere we have an identification, anywhere our identity is wrapped up in a state of being or behavior or thought that causes one of our needs to not be met, we will have to come up against and let go of our own sense of identity, which feels like a life and death choice in order to meet that need. For example, let's say that you are the family scapegoat. If you are the family scapegoat, you grew up developing an identity that you are bad and wrong. You didn't want it to be that way, but the ego, the ID, became attached to the concept of being bad and wrong. So let's say that you want love. Love is a direct contradiction to shame, which is feeling like something about you is bad or wrong. So when you go to get love, instantly your very ego is going to fight against that love because it will perceive that love as a death of itself. The mental understanding of what you have to give up in order to get needs met and actions you can take is absolutely no comparison to the actual physical experience of being able to feel that need being met. Now you can actually do this. I'm going to teach you how. For example, let's say that you want connection. Obviously, my best bet of getting this need met is to find someone who also wants connection. So let's say I find that person. I sit down across from them in a room. What I do is I focus all of my attention on them and only them. I feel myself open up to them at an energetic level. I may open up even verbally by talking to them if talking doesn't take me out of connection. And what I do is I watch the resistance that I have to that. I watch how my mind wants to take me away. I watch the thoughts that come in like, this is not okay. The only reason that this person is here right now is because of some ulterior motive. You want to watch the ways that your own being resists the very thing that you want. Stay with that resistance long enough that the resistance itself begins to settle and you'll start to feel yourself go into more of a vulnerable state. Once you notice where in your body you can't feel connection, switch your focus to where in your body you can feel connection. Pay attention to your heart. Can you feel it there? If not, can you feel it in your skin? If not, is there a part of your body like even your knee where you can actually feel that connection? From there, you want to bring that sensation of the connection as far and deep into your body and through your whole body as you possibly can. Or let's say that what you want is abundance. Go to a place that's super fancy, something that symbolizes wealth for you. Sit there and try to feel like a king. Try to feel like you own it. Try to feel that sensation of you have so much money that you literally can't find enough stuff to spend it on. <laughs> when you do this, I want you to watch the resistance that comes up in your body. What kind of thoughts are trying to tell you this is not the case, this is not what you deserve, this is not the reality? Anything that's getting in the way of you actually having access to that feeling within your body. Stay with it as long as you can until those thoughts and that resistance starts to settle and you feel yourself sort of opening towards that feeling of abundance. Once you notice where in your body you can't feel abundance, switch your focus to where you can feel abundance. So maybe you can't feel it in your chest, maybe it's closed off to that sensation of having lots and lots and lots of money. But maybe in your arms, you do actually feel that feeling of expansion, that feeling of abundance, that feeling of wealth. Put all your focus there and spread that through your entire body if you can. I did a video a while back called Feeling Signatures. If you haven't watched that video, I highly suggest you watch it, or even if you have, go watch it again. Because I explained how people can use feeling signatures to make themselves feel better. But as this applies to meeting the unmet needs, it is so valuable. So for example, let's say that what I want is belonging, but I haven't really had a direct access with belonging, and so how the hell do I know what that feels like? 
What I do is I look for some experience I've had in the past that was the closest to what I think belonging might have felt like. So let's say for me, the closest I got to belonging was this memory I have of roasting marshmallows over a campfire. What I do is I take my attention and I place it fully and totally as if like in a meditation on that memory, on that experience, on the feeling of the marshmallows. When I feel that in my body, I spread that sensation through every cell into my bone marrow around every single organ. I use that sensation as a resource for belonging. The reality of this universe is that it is governed by the law of attraction. Things of like frequency match and coalesce. This is the real reason that people who are born wealthy have no problem creating wealth. They do not often have many thoughts or actions or life experiences that contradict the frequency of wealth. In the absence of the contradiction, nothing is preventing them from manifesting that need immediately. When you release resistance to the things that are preventing you from having what you need, when you give up what you have to give up in order to get a need met, you can allow yourself to feel the opposite vibration of that lack. When you feel the opposite thing, the thing you need, and even more than that, when you recognize that you are feeling it, so it becomes real to your embodiment, the need is being met. Now in a law of attraction based universe, when that need starts getting met on that very deep, visceral, emotional and embodied level, the law of attraction must respond to it. It responds by bringing this need to you in ever increasing ways. It lines you up with the people who can meet those needs. It lines you up with ways that you can meet your own needs. It makes you coalesce with the circumstances to bring about the goals that you want to achieve. It's almost like the universe lays the path out for you to get those needs met. And it's no longer a question because the how is done for you. Once you start this practice of meeting your unmet needs, especially those that you feel are out of your reach, there will no longer be a lack within your being. You will be restored to a state of wholeness. Have a good week.